have changed the world. It's time to change America. When William Jefferson Clinton became the 42nd president of the United States of America in 1993, he ushered in a new era. Not since the Kennedy years had Americans looked to their leader with such optimism. In fact, young Bill himself had met JFK in 1963 when he traveled to Washington as a boy's nation senator. It was one of the defining moments of his life. Clinton came from a troubled and poor Arkansas family, but at Saldic School, where he was active in student politics and a keen saxophone player. He won scholarships to Georgetown University and University College Oxford, spending two years in Britain studying government. Clinton returned to the US to study at Yale Law School in 1970, where he met future wife Hillary Rodham. After receiving his law degree three years later, he entered politics in his home state of Arkansas. Elected governor in 1978, he lost his bid for re-election four years later, then won back office in 1982. Ten years later, Clinton threw his hat in the ring for the Democratic Party's presidential nomination, running a ticket with Al Gore that offered generational change and fresh vision. But his opponents spread rumors of infidelity and shonky business dealings. Do you feel vulnerable at all anymore on character and trust? What the Republicans say is the issue. No, I think I've demonstrated both in this campaign and certainly both in my public life at home. And the people who know me best are not worried about it. On this day, with high hopes and brave hearts in massive numbers, the American people have voted to make a new beginning. On November the 3rd, 1992, Clinton defeated incumbent President George Bush and took office the following year. For the first time in 12 years, the same party was in power in both the White House and the Congress. The winds of change certainly swept through the White House. America's new first lady was more interested in promoting her policy priorities than choosing curtains and opening fates. Clinton's agenda focused on bringing the United States closer to the center and his initiatives included imposing a five-day waiting period for Americans wishing to purchase a handgun and cutting taxes to 15 million low-income families. Clinton's foreign policy imperatives included a sustained effort to negotiate peace in the Middle East. He used America's clout to bring the PLO chairman Yasser Arafat and Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin to the table, leading to the historic Oslo Accords in September 1993 which allowed limited self-rule in the Palestinian territories. The following year, his administration was instrumental in brokering a peace agreement between Israel and Jordan. But in a pattern that was echoed throughout his presidency, domestic scandals threatened to undermine Clinton's position. Failed real estate dealings with which the Clintons had been involved became known as Whitewater and Republicans milked the issue for political capital, attempting to smear the couple's reputation and hobble them at the next election. However, Clinton was a popular president, his charisma and easy manner endearing him to people of all backgrounds. A visit to his alma mater in Oxford saw him mobbed by excited students when he received an honorary doctorate, hailing him for being a doughty and tireless champion for world peace. Clinton stood for re-election in 1996 and easily defeated Republican challenger Bob Dole. But it was controversies in Clinton's second presidential term that really defined his presidency. There is no person in America tonight who feels more humble in the face of this victory than I do.